Let's get some insights on the news shaping the markets. For that, we welcome in Mark Hamrick, Senior Economic Analyst at Bankrate.com. Good morning to you. Tomorrow is the big day. Is this uh, inevitable? Are we going to see a government shutdown? How likely is it? Good morning, uh, Nicole. And yeah, it's a, it's a sad time, I think, for those of us who monitor this very closely because it's yet another indication of the dysfunction of our federal government, obviously, you know, infighting within one party within that government, uh, essentially bringing the federal government to something akin to a halt once again. You know, we had the shutdown uh, that lasted into early 2019, lasted 35 days, uh, and we will not really now face the process of furloughing hundreds of thousands of federal workers and forcing those who have mission critical work uh, to go to their jobs without the prospect of being paid. And uh, that typically doesn't make for happy campers. So uh, the American people are not being served well if indeed we have another partial government shutdown. Right. And you're not going to have paychecks for workers. You're not going to have daycare. There's a lot of things um, in this snowball effect, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I know there may be a tendency on the part of some people, I get the question all the time, is sort of like, well, if it doesn't affect me, then I, we're okay. But that's certainly not abiding by the golden rule, first of all. And anyone who's a taxpayer is essentially seeing their money effectively go up in smoke because what is going to happen, uh, unless we have an unprecedented situation, is that eventually this dis does get resolved at some point down the line, probably a number of weeks, uh, and you will furloughed hundreds of thousands of federal workers who were told to go home, uh, and you will have to pay them the money that they would would have been due had they been on the job. And this comes at a time when, you know, I'm sure you talk about it every day here, Nicole, about the concern about rising federal debt and deficits. That's sort of one of the cards that some who want to shut the government down are sort of holding on to. But this doesn't resolve that issue at all. Uh, and so you're really uh, sort of burning money. And in the meantime, Nicole, uh, you know, one of my biggest concerns, and I, I'm sure you share it with me, is that a week from today, we're due to get the employment report, right? The, one of the most important data points of the month. And there's no way we're going to get that data if the government shuts down and we'll be looking for jobless claims. We'll be looking for the job openings. Later, we'll be looking for the consumer price index. And if the government's not open, we're not going to get access to that. So that that really does create a fog for individuals and for businesses. And oh, by the way, Central Bank. Yeah, well, and that's what we were talking about. That's why we were saying, what should the Fed do if they wanted to make a move? Should they do it in September based on what they know? Because in November, they may be lacking the data that they need if there is, in fact, a government shutdown. And while we always hope that it's political theater and that they solve this in the last minute, they may not. And then the Fed won't have the numbers that they need to make some decisions. That being said, can we talk about the high rate environment? Of course, we went from three and a half to four and a half on the 10 year. We're still up there pretty quickly. Um, yields came off a little bit yesterday, but the truth of the matter is we're still near these highs that we haven't seen in years. What are your thoughts on this higher for longer and why does it matter to folks? Yeah, well, I like the fact that you sort of piggyback those two, the Fed and the rates in the marketplace, because obviously this continues to sort of do that tightening for the Federal Reserve as we eventually, I think, you know, see, uh, we hope we'll see some further downward pressure on the headline inflation numbers, despite this uptick in oil and gasoline. Uh, and so, you know, essentially the real rate goes higher uh, in this environment. And, and so uh, that, that sort of takes some pressure off the Fed. Of course, you know, the PCE numbers we saw today indicate that they are still a ways away from their 2 percent target. Uh, and I do think that the federal government shutdown, to bring it all back around, and Chairman Powell referenced this at the news conference, is yet another sort of straw, uh, so to speak, that uh, is among several that are sources of uncertainty and ultimately headwinds for the U.S. economy. Others, of course, uh, are those high rates, a tighter lending environment, lower demand for loans. You're not going to have tremendous tremendous demand for loans when they're as costly as they are right now. Uh, so we've got plenty to work through here, Nicole, and I think these are reasons for caution. They're not, you know, reasons for significant pessimism, but uh, they are headwinds. 
Tell me how people are doing when it comes to the credit cards. They have a very high credit card rate um, and defaults on loans and things like that. We have credit tightening. We've known that um, to be true. Even um, Jay Powell noted that to a credit crunch. So where are we standing as far as the consumer and how they are faring? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, you know, there's increased pressure on consumers. We see that in the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey out today, which really has been on the headline flat for three straight months. And consumers uh, are not emboldened by federal government shutdowns, and certainly those who are directly affected are not held by that. And and they're also now having to weather the increase in gasoline prices. And, and you know, we've seen a, the gasoline price situation being the highest for this time of year uh, on record. Record. So uh, we're heading into a holiday shopping season. Indeed, our surveys indicate that people are already starting to do some of that uh, purchasing. And I think it's going to be a constrained uh, shopping season. And as we know, uh, the retailers have had reason for caution as well. So it's not an environment that tremendously favors consumers here, uh, but we can hope, at least perhaps even pray, that we'll get into the coming year uh, and the Fed can start thinking about reducing rates. And that is the consensus among economists. And obviously, we saw that on the summary of economic projections recently as well. Yeah. And Jay Powell himself right, right. said, you know, we were we were looking at that and it was likely to be more likely to have um, two cuts rather than four cuts. I mean, we were looking at that for next year. How about gasoline prices? When we talk about an inflationary environment and while some things seem to be behaving or going in the right direction, um, gasoline, not necessarily. Nobody wants a lot Yeah, uh, that's probably on the top of economic factors that are sort of keeping me up at night, uh, at least uh, as the analogy goes, because yeah, this could really feed into broader inflation once again, Nicole. I mean, you know, you have to transport so many things, including food, <laughs> including the things that people uh, want to buy over this holiday shopping season. And so the cost of fuel goes up once again. And so uh, this could be sort of a black swan of sorts that ends up sort of I don't want to say upsetting the apple cart for the Fed, but it's certainly not a welcome move in terms of where we are with inflation and interest rates. And, uh, you know, who knows? We've, we've seen situations in the past where high oil and, oil and gasoline prices are followed by a time of uh, some economic uh, constraint. And so uh, this could be also another source of essentially stress for the U.S. economy. Yeah. Good to see you, Mark. Thank you so much. Always. Mark Hamrick, Senior Economic Analyst, Bankrate.com. Thank you, Mark.